I have I have been a proponent of Lake Two um, since the time that I was was in office. I think that where we are at right now, if we are going to have to go back and start thinking in terms of doing these studies over again, I mean the city has spent millions and millions and millions of dollars in terms of, of studies, and if in fact we would get a permit to do this, I think it probably would be the last lake built in the country because no one's going to go through the process or spend the money to do that. But I think that as mayor, what I would want to do is to have some understanding in terms of exactly what the process is and is this going to be the first of a number of studies we are going to, to have to do because the studies that have been done or get to be about 10 years old and if they're going to make us go back and start redoing them then I think it's time to probably pull the plug on on the second lake and go ahead and begin selling the property and to take the assets that you have in terms of the dollars that are tied up in that property and then start investing that money back into uh, CWLP. But your first preference is to My build first preference up. would be to, to build it because I think that given the investment that we have, which exceeds $28 million, um, that we should go ahead if we can. But my concern is the fact that if they start this whole process over again and just keep dragging, dragging it out, you're throwing bad money uh, away. And I have a feeling they could go for another 10 years and, and still not have an answer. No, I, I agree with Mike. I mean, we, we do need to look at a second water source, whether it's Lake 2, uh, building a pipeline, you know, was one of the ideas to the Mississippi at one time that looked, you know, too cost, costly. Uh, I, I think that, you know, we need, you know, people forget, you know, in 2000 we had the water restrictions and all that, we're up, you know, and people were upset. So I think sometimes people forget, you know, or they don't, they don't realize that you need this, and, you know. Our power plant needs a lot of water. I would hate to see it. So we're gonna we need to look at it, and it's something that you know we'll consider. I think the one thing we can all agree on it's it's not a time sensitive issue. Um, uh, I, I agree with Mike. Uh, we, whoever the next mayor is need needs to get their arms around where we're, we're at with the uh, EPA uh, permitting process. There's I know there's some permit um, environmental impact permits that are out there allegedly are to be uh, ruled on very soon. You know, I don't know what the status of, of those they, particular... They've they come back and said we have to do another do study another. <laughs> before they take um, the next step. Uh, and they're, 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 estimating, they're, they're estimating that cost at 100 grand. Yeah. And in 100 grand in the overall scheme of things is not that much money, but if that just becomes the first thing that they're going to be asking us for, it's going to be a problem. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and so, yeah, I, I absolutely agree also that, uh, you know, uh, potable water supply going forward is absolutely critical, especially with respect to um, health care in the city. And, uh, the, the first question I was asked by Jack Spiro, who's the uh, CEO of Kendrick Long-Term Acute Care Facility that just opened in January here uh, on um, North Walnut Street, the old Doctors Park location, was what is your water supply capabilities? Uh, huge consumers. Now, they're, they're nowhere on par with the memorial. Or St. John's in terms of water consumption, but that was that was the first question out of their mouth as well. So water is, is absolutely imperative and and um, can cannot be uh, emphasized strongly enough. So uh, we we need to you know get our arms around where we're at with Lake Two. So you're not sure if you're for it or not. Well, I, what I'm for is adequate water is what I'm for and with respect to uh, how it impacts our local economy. I I agree with Mike Coffee. I, I built a house in 1988, and that was a, a drought period where. Uh, again, nobody. When the lake's full, everybody kind of yawns about right. future yeah. water. But uh, the, these issues have to be addressed and thought through. Uh, but uh, my lawn, I couldn't even. You know, there's water restrictions uh, every other day. Watering, you couldn't clean your car. All those types of things. I remember those days. So, it is imperative to to have uh, a supply that we can get our arms around and however we address that. But uh, uh, you know, the city needs to find out. The new mayor and the new council needs to find out where exactly we're at. With respect to how we go forward with you know, permitting, with um, you know additional land that might need to be assembled, and on and on in terms of if we do go forward with that, so um, certainly give it uh, its due diligence. Sell it. Sell, Sell the land back. Okay. Get off of it. It's, it's nothing. It was should never happen. Okay. I 
at this point, I'd have to agree we're going to end up selling it. I think it would be a great asset to the city of Springfield to have a recreation lake. I just don't think you'll have the political guts up there to raise water rates again to do it. So, I, again, everybody has to understand one thing. You sell that lake, all that, all that money has to go to the water front. You can't take it over to the corporate side. The law says it was bought by ratepayers, water rates. You only can put it back in the fund. And you're not going to be able to sell it all at once. So it'll be over time. Uh, if you had the political willpower, we should build it. But I don't think you'll ever see 10 aldermen and the mayor have that much guts. So you as mayor would try to start selling? Yeah, I think so. I mean, but everybody has to understand, if we have a drought, and I was here in 2000, there's going to be some severe restrictions put on. Because the, the gravel pit stuff's a joke. So let's get over, you're going to use the gravel pit. Nobody has any clue about how much water is in an aquifer, if you can pump it or not. And the cost of a pipeline and everything will get as bad as... Lake do with me for us. Uh, and I should probably let, give Mario a chance on this one too, but does Springfield need a second water source? What do you do? I don't think you, water? I mean, if you're willing to shut people's water off in a, in a drought, no, we don't need a second. Because with the plant, I mean, we come this close in 2000 having to do that, folks. I mean, if it, it hadn't rained to the uh, southeast of us and we didn't have the pumping station on the South Fork of the River, that lake would have dried up. We pumped five to six foot of water out of the river that year to keep that lake and then we had a miracle rain in July, which you never see around here. I mean, we were on par for 1950. Now, with the new power plant and you've lost all your refrigeration, you know, Sith, or Roberts, Bunmatic, a lot of the places that use water are now in everybody's home has every water restrictor on earth. That's why you don't like your showers or your faucets no more, or you got to flush your toilet three times. I mean, our water usage has dropped in spring. We're getting rid of Chatham. We could probably survive even a 1955 drop with our lake. So, I mean, it's probably to the point now where you're not going to have the political will to do it. But I think it'd be a great asset to have a lake where sportsmen and everybody could go free of any houses, free of anybody griping where they fish. And, but it, last I heard it, if we got the permit, we'd have to raise water rates another 83%. I don't think anybody's going to do that. No, certainly not. No, I, the answer is no, in short. The, this idea has been floating out there for so long that it's time to let it go, I think. The, I, I just don't, as Frank said, I just don't see people being minimal to having their rates go up so much it would cost so much to build it and the fact is he's right we don't have Chatham anymore and there is a big push for for environmental concerns and, and water conservation and as long as we continue to do that I think that we can get through any any drought that comes through I mean the city of Atlanta did it a couple of years ago when their their lake was nearly drained what I'd like to see and you're, you're a little bit you're mostly correct on your statement about the water fund but actually 15.7 million dollars in water funds have been spent to purchase land for Lake 2. Another 5 million has been spent out of the electric and power fund. So if you did sell them, he's right, it would have to go back there. The folks that contend that we should solve the city's corporate budget issue with those funds, it's not possible. But what you could do is you could sell the 15.7 million and who knows, I don't know how long that that's been accumulating, whether that land's worth more or less now or about the same. But let's say that you got 16 million out of it. One thing you could do is you could take that 16 million, turn around, and pay off some of the debt for the water infrastructure infrastructure improvements that are going on right now, for which rates have had to go up 47 percent. But it's probably 50 when you take compounding into into account, and you can mitigate some of those rate increases that have been passed on to the customers now, and possibly lower and probably lower water rates that have been increased at this point in time as you continue to look through the possibility of another or secondary source that might be more cost effective. But again, the question is, we've survived, what, 50, 60 years since this thing first started talking about it. I just don't see, I just don't see it being feasible. I really don't. Um, I mean, I think I, I agree pretty much with, with my colleagues here. Um, However, I, you know, and, and again, sort of just from a pragmatic standpoint, we've been doing this for so long, now we've got to put more money into studies, we've already put so much money into studies, I mean, it just seems like this never-ending thing that just is like, you know, a money pit, um, and there's no, no end in sight for it. I don't know that there's been a convincing argument yet about the need, I mean, so we're not going to do this, we don't just, I don't think we should just be building this thing just to build it. Um, I mean, it's got to be a need for it, and um, 
you know, I just I just don't know that. The, the, the one thing I would add, though, that I think is, is possibly something we could explore is, um, you know, looking at turning it into some kind of a, a natural wildlife uh, preserve or state park, something like that. And I, I do know that DNR and some, there's, you know, has expressed some interest in, you know, looking at that. Um, the one thing that if you did go that route, then if you did end up needing it, or if there was a compelling need at some point that came up that, you, you know, you wouldn't have sold off all the land. And it, it could actually then be turned into a lake if it had to. Uh, but, I mean, that's just something I think I would explore. I, I don't think as mayor, um, or I know as mayor, it, I don't believe we should continue to pursue it. And whether we start selling it off and that kind of thing, I mean, I think we need to start exploring what the options are.